of Ethan and the rest of the cranes. I just didn't want to believe in Whitney. You know, growing up, my parents always warned that people without money would target our family for their own selfish gain. It was so cynical, I, I never wanted to believe them. But after what Jean-Luc did to Sheridan, and now that girl who's been stalking me, I have to say, I believe them. All these years, I thought Ethan was someone who judged people on what they were on the inside, not how much money they had. What a jerk I've been. I'm so sorry you're hurting, Teresa. I mean, you've always been such a dreamer. We tried to tell you that what you wanted from Ethan couldn't happen. Life is not a soap opera. I know that now. I just hope it's not too late for me. I wasted so many years on, on my dream of Ethan when I could have met a boy from around here, someone from my own background. Your life isn't over yet. What about that job Ivy Crane offered me as her personal secretary? I would have given my right arm for that job, Whitney. You should have seen the mansion and Mrs. Crane's gowns and her zillion bottles of expensive perfumes and her closet alone was the size of my bedroom and her shoes, Whitney. I never knew they made shoes in that many colors. At least you got to see them once. I was made for that job, Whitney. I would have been perfect for it. Even Mrs. Crane said so. Now I can't have it all because of Ethan. So you finally decided to come home, Teresa. Please don't be mad, Mama. You don't expect me to be happy at the things you've done. I'm sorry, Teresa. I had to tell her about those accidents with Ethan. I am so disappointed in you, Teresa. But when he must have told you, I didn't mean for any of them to happen. Things were bad enough, but you made them even worse by going to see Mrs. Crane when I told you not to. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. Were you able to leave tonight without running into Ethan? Yes. Well, at least that's something. I should be prepared when I see Mrs. Crane tomorrow morning. What did she say when you turned down her generous job offer? You did tell her that you couldn't take the job as her personal secretary. Oh, Dios mío, Teresa, you didn't tell her. Are you okay? Did my question upset you, Mother? <laughs> no, of course not, Ethan. And I applaud your very democratic view of love, though I dare say you might feel differently if you hadn't found the perfect girl in Gwen. You really think I fell in love with Gwen because she comes of a family that's wealthy and powerful? <laughs> no, certainly not. But you can't tell me that having those things in common isn't a tremendous boon to your relationship. To tell you the truth, I've never even considered it, Mother. And why should you? You and Gwen, you're made for one another. That's all I meant, was you could never be happy with anyone else. I think what you really meant is that I could never love anyone who's poor. I disagree. And love is all that matters. Well, that's easy to believe when you're young. Though I think you'd have a harder time if you were with someone who was poor. You wouldn't have anything in common with them and you wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> well, you think I'm silly? I'm not laughing at you, Mother. I'm laughing at myself. I was so angry earlier about Sheridan being hurt by that French gold digger I was saying all the things you are. I know what I'm talking about, Ethan. I'm sure you do. And no one can love someone who's only after them for their money. But I can love any woman, rich or poor, as long as she's right and she loves me. I'm sure Sheridan feels the same way. You try anything else and I'm using your tires for target practice. Well, I hope you had a good time, Buster. As you're about to say goodbye to life as you know it. There's no way your sorry behind isn't doing jail time after those moves. My name isn't Buster. My behind is anything but sorry, and you can't arrest me. You've broken at least ten laws in the last ten minutes. Give me one good reason I shouldn't arrest you. Because my last name is Crane. Excuse me. 
Can't you read, officer? C-R-A-N-E, as in Alistair Crane and Julian Crane in the Crane Industries. Do you want me to go on? Because I can. And start treating the Cranes the same way I treat everyone else. No special favors, no special deals. You do the crime, you do the time. I don't care what your last name is. You call me crazy, but I'm not going to play the game anymore. You know what? If it costs me my job, so be it. Now, at least I'll know I lost it doing the right thing. I know the name. I know it very well. Well, then I guess we can forget all about this. So if you would just move your car, I'll be on my way. And I'll send a check to the Harmony Police Station to cover any damage to your car. Uh, that's very generous of you. But you don't have to do that. No, no, I insist. There's no reason why there should be any hard feelings between us. Suit yourself. But you have to get out of the car. I don't understand. You're under arrest, Ms. Crane. Now I need to cuff you. The restaurant is closing early. We have to repair the electrical damage caused by the windstorm. Excuse me. That means none of the lobsters will get boiled tonight. Another victory for us vegetarians.